Aaron, thanks for being with us. We appreciate the time. I know you're busy just like we are getting ready for this game on Sunday, but hey, we've got to get you on here to, to talk about the Raiders and learn what the Raiders have to offer because it's going to be a good matchup on Sunday. So Vegas Raiders are 2-1 to start this season. I mean, they beat a really talented Saints team at home mm -hmm. Monday night, but couldn't get it done against a team that the Bills don't like so much <laughs> in the Patriots. So where do the strengths lie with this Raiders team, and how has it helped them to get to 2-1 so far? First of all, Manny, thank you very much for having me. I am excited. I think a lot of people are really excited for this week four matchup with the Bills, of course, taking on the Raiders here at Allegiant. They're back here at home again, um, which you saw how the home opener against the Saints went. And I think everybody else was surprised about that Saints win, except for the Raiders. Um, and when you talk about the strengths that the Raiders have, I think one of the strengths and one of the curses is actually the same thing in many respects. It's their youth. They have a lot of awesome, talented young guys on both sides of the ball. When I'm talking the wide receivers, obviously Henry Ruggs brings his own dynamic playmaking ability. Brian Edwards, also a rookie on the outside, a big, more of a big body type of guy. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, you have Jonathan Abram, who was out largely for all of last year, making big plays. You saw the um, interception against Cam Newton this past week, certainly setting the tone. But when you have youth, you also have a little inexperience. And I think that's also possibly part of the problem is when you are banged up. You know, everybody's banged up right now, mm -hmm. didn't have a preseason, a lot of injuries now heading into week four. And I think some of that inexperience can potentially start to show when you're missing some of the veteran guys on the offensive line, like a Richie Incognito or a Trent Brown. Um, so you have the youth, which is really exciting to see for the Raiders moving forward. But at the same time, you also have the youth because that's showing a little bit of their inexperience when you have this kind of adversity um, heading in week in and week out. Yeah, I mean, the Raiders have had so many of those early round draft picks the last few years. When I think about the last few years in drafts, I mean, the Raiders have been at the top of the board there in so many draft picks. So it's nice to see that some of this youth on this team is hopefully uh, filling this roster into things that they want to be down the road. One of those players who's younger, who's not a rookie, but is very talented is running back Josh Jacobs. He's fifth in the league in rushing yards right now. And I just want to know what makes him such a talented running back. Of course, it's going to be tough to stop someone like him. Some of our players have said he's someone that is so elusive and can break tackles pretty easily. So what have you seen from him this season and his hot start in the last few weeks? Definitely a hot start. Certainly, of course, in our first game against the Panthers, he had three rushing touchdowns uh, in our NFL opener on the road there in Carolina, which isn't easy to do, you know, East, East Coast kick for us. You know, but he's the kind of guy that I feel like, you know, he sets a franchise uh, record for rookie running backs uh, for, rush, for rushing yards, excuse me, with largely a broken shoulder last year. He was pretty banged up. Um, and yet he was still able to do the kind of things um, that he was doing last year as a rookie. Many people thought he should have been offensive rookie of the year. Um, but what I think I take from that is he's a tough guy, you know, uh, and still very much able to be relied upon. And you're seeing that happen week in, week out with us uh, for here, the Raiders. And after um, Coach Gruden went to the podium after that game against the Panthers, he said he reminded him a little bit of Walter Payton. So wow. that's some good company to be in. And I think that's the kind of guy Josh Jacobs wants to be. He wants to be an every down back. I mean, he talked about before the season started wanting to catch 60 receptions. I believe he only had 20 the year um, before his rookie year. So he's the kind of guy that just wants to help carry the offense when he can. I think the, the question for us as a Raiders organization is we got to keep this guy healthy too. Yeah, the, the Bills rushing defense has got to do a better job of stopping running backs, especially Josh Jacobs this weekend. They allowed 167 rushing yards last week. So something they're trying to fix, something they said they've got to be better with their gap integrity, uh, better coming off mm. the blocks and things like that. But this game looks like it could be another 
high scoring game, just based off of what these two teams are averaging. These two teams are allowing on defense to the bills are in third right now. They're averaging 31 points a game. The Raiders are eighth averaging 29.3 points per game. And of course, scoring is up all over the league right now we're seeing, but how can the Raiders defense use a game against Cam Newton to prepare for another quarterback who can also run the ball in Josh Allen? I have to be honest, I'm a little afraid of Josh <laughs> Allen coming to town this week. He's been absolutely unstoppable, and we've been talking about him all week because I think what is very exciting about your player there, your quarterback, is not just that now he's starting to beat people with his arm, yeah. which is very exciting. I mean, John Gruden is, ex you know, he, he, he's excited about this guy. This kid has a very bright future, of course. But I think the other thing he adds to this is his maturity and his composure. And down by four points in the fourth quarter, he engineers an 11 play drive and finds his tight end and Tyler Croft with moments left in the game and wins the game when his defense was nowhere to be found. And I think that's the exciting part about what we have, you know, in a guy like Josh Allen, that's going to be really difficult to stop. Now, what I will say with Cam Newton and what I was excited to see that our defense was able to do when it came to having a guy like Cam Newton to go up against was Cam, Cam the week before had about 400 passing yards in Seattle. And, uh, you know, that's no easy task. I know, of course, like fans weren't there or anything. But um, when, when the Raiders came to New England and, jo and, we, and we were up against Cam Newton, what, what I like to see was that our Raiders defense was able to stop him. I mean, after that first interception by Jonathan Abram, it certainly set the tone um, that Cam Newton, Josh McDaniels had to change the game script. And then obviously you saw us get gashed by the running backs, 250 yards collectively on the ground, um, which is what our tough task is going to need to be this week. But what I, what I will say about, you know, Cam Newton and the Josh Allen comparison is they, and Cam Newton had been very accurate in his first two weeks. You know, you're starting to see, wow, Cam Newton is really performing to high expectations I'm hoping we can do that again against Josh Allen so we'll see if they're able to but certainly again that's that young secondary that the Raiders are relying on and we'll see if they can they can do hold up their end of the bargain this week against the Bills Definitely. It seems like the Raiders are a little bit bit by the injury bug right now. And across the league, we've seen some really big injuries, some season ending injuries. Thankfully, uh, the Bills haven't had any yet, and they look to be pretty healthy going into this game. But with the injuries that the Raiders have right now, who's an under the radar player on offense and defense that the Bills should look out for for Sunday? I mean, I think we, we've been talking about him all week, too, because he had a great game against the Patriots. When Darren Waller was nowhere to be found, they needed to find another guy in Hunter Renfro. And so I certainly know a lot of people have been picking him up on fantasy waiver wires um, because he's been a guy that's been able to carry the team when they're missing some key players. Um, you know, Darren Waller, obviously, double coverage, you know that that's what Bill Belichick is really good at, is taking out your, you know, biggest offensive weapon. Um, and they did that against us on Sunday. So it was exciting to see a guy like Hunter Renfro really step up and uh, – um, and really lead the charge. I think he led the team in receptions. He had 84 yards and a touchdown on the day. So it's nice to be able to have guys like him, like Nelson Aguilar, um, where when we are missing some really key offensive players, uh, he can step up. Um, defensively, under the radar, you know, I, I, I think all of the guys in the secondary largely are very young. Um, and he had a, a – he banged his shoulder pretty – significantly Monday night football against the Saints but Jonathan Abram is a guy that's really fun to watch the safety there the young guy second year didn't play really in the first uh you know season and he's really been a very vocal guy on the defense that you know with such a young team you're wondering who's the d a leader that's going to step up and I think like Jonathan Abram is the kind of guy that wants to step into and fill that role for them.
Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how the Bills wide receivers try and match up against the secondary and what they have to offer. They definitely have youth on their side there. We have a couple young receivers too, so that'll be fun to watch there. And this was a game that Bills Mafia had circled on their schedules. I mean, Bills fans were so looking forward to taking a trip to Vegas, to enjoying this new stadium, to enjoying the city. I mean, when they played against the Titans last year, I think the entire city went to Nashville on like Monday <laughs> and just partied until the game on Sunday. So I was figuring it would be much of the same for this game. Unfortunately, there's no fans in the stands for the Raiders yet. There's no fans in the stands right now for the Bills yet. Um, but with this new stadium, you've gotten to see it. What are some of your favorite parts about Allegiant Stadium since it's opened? It is so cool looking, first of all. It's it's right off the strip. So it's like one of the first things you see. It's so sleek and chic and black and it's just shiny and new and it's really beautiful. It's a really beautiful structure. I mean, they did a great job. Um, and then when you go inside, there's not a bad seat in the house. They, they've really done a really good job at uh, engaging the fan experience. So every seat feels very optimal. Um, and then the other part is they really pride themselves on the player experience. They have, it's like a retractable tray where they have real grass. So players get to play on real grass that they- that is so crazy. It's crazy. It smells like real, I mean, it's so cool. So players love that, and there was no detail, uh, you know, not looked at when it came to building Allegiant Stadium, and we're going to miss you guys. It would be, you know, you guys would really love it. You guys would enjoy it, and, um, you know, not this year, but next season, hopefully, everything will be sort of back to normal, and it, it's really a sight to, to see, so... It'll be fun on Sunday for sure. Yeah, we're totally <laughs> bummed we're going to miss out on that experience. It's going to be fun to just see it on the broadcast though. Aaron, I've got to ask you as a reporter, this season has been so odd and weird for all of us, for everybody in the world, for these players uh, trying to cover a football team in COVID, trying to cover a draft during COVID, everything getting shut down, not knowing when training camp was going to start, not really knowing if the season was going to start at some mm. point. So when you look back on these last four or five months of your life and trying to cover a team and getting a new job with the Raiders, congrats, by the way, Thank what you. has that been like for you? Is there a story that just sticks out in your mind that kind of says this is peak 2020? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, they, they, they keep surpassing every, every day. You're just like, I can't believe I'm living in this crazy reality. And I think, um, thank you very much. It's, it's an honor to be a part of Raiders organization. They've been, they've been so wonderful to me. Um, and so welcoming to me and so excited to be here. Of course, their new transition into Las Vegas. Um, but I think the craziest part is covering the team and wearing a mask every day. And of course they take it very serious here. Yeah. Um, you aren't able to, as a reporter, as a host, I haven't really been able to, you know, they don't let anybody in the locker room, of course, and you're not able to go and meet the players. These are guys you're having to talk to now vir virtually virtual. Um, and so that's an, an interesting, unusual experience, I think, for someone who works in the media has you know typically a close relationship with the with the team with the media and um, you're not able to have that this year so I think at the end of the day I'm really grateful we have football I'm grateful that I get to see it on Sunday it's it's normal um, in that respect but we're doing the best we can to make sure we keep having football on Sunday so um, making sure we stick to protocols very strictly over here and uh, and, you know, cover the team the best we can with these sort of, you know, additional challenges you weren't expecting to see in 2020. But yes, it's been an interesting 2020, needless to say. Right? I completely agree. Covering the team this year has looked completely different, but I've, I've been happy that we've at least had football and that we can still bring some awesome stories to our fans and to NFL fans as a whole. So Aaron, thanks for joining me on here. Thank and you. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you for having me and we'll talk soon. Good yes. luck. Yes.